What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Today, we are going to be wrapping up the SFL season. But as the title suggests, only until the Madden 25 iteration of the SFL comes out, which Madden 25 is only three days away from dropping as I record this It'll probably already be out uh, for at least for early access by the time this video goes live on YouTube and hold on to your freaking britches because when the Madden 25 iteration of the SFL series drops, I am in the lab as we speak. I'm going to be customizing all 32 teams using the team builder, assuming that the team builder works and is not bugged and you guys can expect to see teams like the Fort Worth Rough Riders, the Savannah Spirits, the Roswell Revolution, the North Carolina Flyers, just to name a few. And of course, subscribers are going to be able to join in that series, same as this one too. So Madden 25, the SFL, please stick around, stay tuned, subscribe if you're new. It is going to be a fun, fun time. But today, we're going to wrap up the Madden 24 SFL series. Going to see if any of our subscribers can win that Super Bowl or who's going to be in the playoffs, who's not going to be in the playoffs. Going to check on season stats of all of our subscribers, see how everybody in the league, and we got 52 subscribers in the SFL. Probably start by simming out to the midseason, see how all the teams are doing, see how our subscribers are doing with, the, with their stats and whatnot. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. And if this is your first time watching an SFL series and you don't know what this is, basically, I allow subs my subscribers on this channel to join the SFL. You can I can create your player, add them into the league, add them onto a team of your choice. And basically, we follow you all throughout the season. It's super fun. It's super exciting. We got an official Discord in the link below where I keep track of season stats, keep track of team records, all that good stuff. And it's just a really, really fun time. It's a subscriber interactive series. And make sure when that new video drops for Madden 25 that you guys watch it. And I will show you how you can join the league. But here at the midseason mark, our team, Toronto Thunderbirds, we are actually leading the AFC East at 3-3. Three and three, So the AFC East is not a good team at all, it would appear. And we'll kind of check around the league, see how all the teams are doing. So the AFC North right now is led by the Columbus Caps. And uh, we got the Monarchs and the Condors. Some subscribers on those teams so they're in uh you know three third and fourth place but columbus caps have the afc north locked down as of right now st louis bulls in the afc east this is a strong division or at least you know it's it's top loaded pretty well the st louis bulls subscriber austin kringle on that team they are six and one the river hogs five and two and then how about oilers nation man they were running the freaking tables last uh last season winning like seven in a row they're kind of struggling, but still hovering around that 500 mark. And then the Orlando Orbits, uh, two and five, last place right now in the AFC South, AFC East. That's my division. So obviously, Toronto Thunderbirds. You see, I got my Thunderbirds, uh, red and yellow on, representing. We're leading, but we're still not good. The Austin Lumberjacks are three and four. Brooklyn Nighthawks two and five. And then the Dreadnoughts of Melbourne, who have lots of subscribers now on that team, they sit at 2-5. and five. Over in the AFC West, we got the Salt Lake City Bisons, led by their subscriber QB Mason Buchanan at a strong 6-1. and one. Salt Lake City Bisons, we got some history with them. You know, we beat them to move on to the Super Bowl and inevitably win it last season. So we've had some battles, or at least a battle, with them, the Oakland Wizards at 3-3. Three and three. Aviators also kind of struggling. They got tons of subscribers on that team as well. They're at 3-4. and four. And then the Albuquerque Armadillos are at 2-4. and four. Moving on over to the NFC North, we got the Louisville Desperados at 500, leading that division. And there's not really... We got some subscribers on the Snowhawks, but that's it. And they're unfortunately 2-5, and five, unfortunately for them. We just played them last week. Uh, or was it... It was either last week or week before. I can't remember... And it was a pretty good battle. And then over in the NFC South, we got the San Juan Tigers leading the pack at 5-2. Virginia Beach Blues and uh, our new one of our newest subscribers, if not the newest, one no, second newest subscriber, C. Tucker, quarterback of the Blues. They're at 3-3. Three and three. OKC Antlers at 3-4. and four. And then the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods last place at 2-4. and four. 
And then over in the NFC East, we got the London Mounties at 6-1. San Antonio Voyagers, who that's the team that we played in the Super Bowl last season. They're still doing pretty good at 5-2. We got the Chicago Elks at 3-3. Three and, three. and then the Dubs, the Dublin Shamrocks, they are last place at 3-4 and four as well. And then rounding out the NFC, we got the Portland Steamers. No subscribers on that team or the Huskies. And they're leading the pack, so 5-1 five and one and 5-2 and two respectively. And then also the Sacramento Sentinels, led by star quarterback Rocky DiBernardo. They're 3-3. Three and three. And then the Honolulu Dragons at 3-4. and four. So no more uh, winless teams and no more defeat or undefeated teams. So everybody's lost. Everybody's won. We got the Bisons in first place as of right now. And then the Dreadnoughts and others, uh, you know, tied for last place, but still a lot of season to go. Let's check on the league leaders and see if any of our subscribers are amongst the top in their respective categories. And again, I do keep track of the league leaders in the official SFL Discord, so you can always check that if you want to see how your subscriber player's doing, how your team's doing, etc., etc. I encourage you to join. Again, the link is in the description. But looking at the passing, our quarterback, Jordan Love, who's playing well, he's, he played preseason against the Browns, a couple snaps today as I record this, and he had a 65-yard bomb to Don Tavian Wicks. I'm telling you guys, I said it earlier, go back and fact check me. I said watch out for Don Tavian Wicks on the Packers and Jordan Love. They connected for a deep strike in real life, of course, but Jordan Love in the SFL is leading the league in passing yards. And how about subscriber Jesse Buzo Jr., second place at 1,804 yards on the Shamrocks. That's good to see. And checking out some other subscribers here, we got Derek Daragosa of the Brooklyn Nighthawks. He's over 1,600. Cameron Moore, also over 1,600 as well. 13 touchdowns for Moore, 12 for Daragosa. Mason Buchanan, who, again, his Salt Lake City Bisons are number one. He's got 1,619 yards. Michael Yakin, who's in our division, 1,596. Rocky DiBernardo, 1,585. Uh, Jaden Hayes, who's on the struggling Melbourne Dreadnoughts, 1579 for him so lots of subscribers here lucas thomas of the uh, oilers so you see lots of subscribers in here but uh shout out to at least as of right now jesse buzo jr being our highest subscriber in terms of passing yards and then in terms of passing touchdowns we got of course it's always patrick mahomes and uh, our highest subscriber right now quarterback in terms of touchdowns is cameron moore at 13 also mason buchanan tied with him as well Jesse Buzo's got 12. Derek Gosa's got 12. Yakin's got 12. Lionel Moore of the uh, Redwoods has 12. So some nice uh, stats there for touchdowns for some of our subscribers. How about Anthony Richardson? Not a subscriber, I don't think. Leading the league in interceptions, though. 10. Uh, anybody, any subscribers chucking the picks? It would be me, definitely, if I had played a lot of these games. But Lucas Thomas of the Oilers has 7 Daragosa of the Nighthawks has six. Yakin has six. So people are pretty much, you know, in that five through seven range. I would say Rocky DiBernardo with uh, six as well. Getting a look at our league leaders in rushers. No subscribers up near the top. But our first subscriber is Austin Kringle of the St. Louis Bulls. And again, they're six and one, too. So he's doing a good job carrying the load. You know, no pun intended <laughs> on that team. 563 yards for him. Aiden Leslie of the Aviators at 548. Both subscriber QBs have six touchdowns as well. And anybody else up here? Johnny Waters of the Orbits. He's at 457 and two. Justin Shepard of the Anchorage Snowhawks. He's at 434 and four. And I am Al Musa, who really killed it last season. Kind of took a little bit of a slide this season here in season number two. But he's at 429 and six. And they can't forget about our man Tubby McDouble on the Thunderbirds. 411 and six for him as well. Austin Kringle and Aiden Leslie, both sub leading the subscribers, at least not the league, but they got six touchdowns. How about fumbles? Anybody coughing up the pigskin a lot? Uh, not really. I mean, a couple guys got one, but I was, <laughs> I wanted to see if there was like a subscriber player that had seven fumbles or something like that. Not that that would be good, but it would definitely be uh, interesting, interesting to see. And receiving yards, not uh, anybody up here. There's Dontavian Wicks. I was just talking, I'm telling you, man. Record it, clip it now. This guy's about to be a beast. But it looks like our leader in terms of subscribers for receiving yards is Alexander Kloblek of the Dreadnoughts in our division. He's at 5, 16, and 3. Zay Jones on our team. Just wanted to throw that out there. Man, where's all the subscriber receivers at? We don't have really 
anybody up here for the most part. I know we got subscriber receivers in the league. Easy Fuentes also of the Dreadnoughts. So the top two subscriber players in terms of receiving yards are on the Dreadnoughts, but they're two and five. How does that work? I don't know. Easy at 379 and four. Anybody else? We're not going to scroll. I'm going to go through the full stats of every subscriber at the end, towards the end of the episode. So make sure you stick around for that. Jaden Taylor at 345 and one. But yeah, not a whole lot of receivers, you know, subscriber receivers, that is, putting up the yardage. But we still got half a season left to go. So anything can happen. And anybody leading the league massively in touchdowns? Nope. Nope. It's pretty much just uh, the regular guys of the bunch. And I'll uh, we'll go ahead and move on to defense. Total tackles. Show me. We don't have that many. Def I mean, we got a decent amount of defenders in the SFL, but definitely more offensive guys, I would say. So I would love to see you know, in the Madden 25 version of the SFL, want to see some more defenders step up there. And I'm not seeing anybody really in tackles and uh, maybe maybe TFLs, though. But you got the defense kind of has always been buggy. Like, I feel like it doesn't show, you know, at least for my players, like the AFC won't show up on here sometimes. The NFC won't show up on here sometimes. So maybe we'll just do it by that. We'll do it by AFC, NFC. So show me any subscriber here in tfl someone there we go not oreo of the aviators he's got seven it's pretty good he's uh one of our newer subscribers that joined and i'm not seeing really anybody else for the most part i'm trying to make sure that i don't uh you know scroll past what about sacks show me somebody leading the league or up there miles garrett that's nice he's on our team but not a subscriber Miles, if you're watching, please like the video, please subscribe, but not Oreo with four. So he's easily the best uh, subscriber defender that we've seen, you know, so far, so far in this uh, scrolling through these stats, not really anybody else showing up. Take a quick look at interceptions and see uh, if anybody's up there. I highly doubt it. Not a lot of picks that I saw before simming. Yeah, there's not really uh, anybody in there. So fortunately, the defense doesn't look great for our subscribers, but like I said, Still a whole half of a season left to go. Can't forget about our punter, Mr. Jack Mavros. He's up there, up there in terms of average yards per punt, almost 52. So that's nothing to scoff at. What about net average? Where's uh, where's Mr. Mavros fall in net average? He's kind of down there a little bit, 44.8 and only two inside the 20. But hey, a long of 71. Is that the highest? It's not the highest, but it's up there. Maybe the Thunderbirds just haven't had to punt the ball too much this season. I'm I'm at least going to tell myself that to help myself sleep better at night. Stopping week three here. This is the first time that we can see the playoff picture. So what is it looking like around the league here? Let me move my camera over so we can get a better look. So over on the AFC side, we got the Salt Lake City Bisons. They're the one seed. St. Louis Bulls and us, the Thunderbirds, are the two and the seven. So subscribers, all three, te all three of those teams have subscribers. We got the Austin Lumberjacks, who obviously in our division, they're three. And then how about the Houston oh, Oilers? They scratched and fought and claw their way, their way back into a playoff berth, at least for now. And then the four and the five seed, the Caps and the River Hogs, no subscribers on that team. And then over on the NFC side, we got the Portland Steamers, uh, the San Antonio Voyagers and the Chicago Elks, no subscribers. Really only as of right now, the Virginia Beach Blues are the only team in the, a in the uh, NFC they have subscriber players on no the voyagers have i'm sorry the voyagers have some subscribers they're the two seed the virginia beach blues have some subscribers and they are the three seed but everybody else the mounties the black knights the huskies the elks the steamers nobody on that team but we still got several more weeks but this is how the playoff picture is looking at least as of right now here in week 13. we are in the wild card against a division opponent the austin lumberjacks how about the Brooklyn Nighthawks and the Dreadnoughts, man. 4-13 and 3-14. and, three and 14. That is rough. And just to show you here, I'll go to the schedule. Um, show you that I did not... Not that it matters. I mean, I play as the Thunderbirds, you know. But uh, just to show you guys that I did not force any wins or do any tomfoolery like that. I really... I, I like to do that. And I really... Okay, home. That's the bye week. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> did I? No. I like to do that. And honestly, like... I don't know how you guys feel, but I wish other YouTubers would do that too, because I don't know. Sometimes I watch these some of these rebuilds. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, but it's like, really? You just win every single time? Every You get to the Super Bowl every single time? Okay, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I, anyways, that's just my own personal take, whatever. But just to show you guys that the Thunderbirds did not 
force sim any wins. We'll get a look at the seeding here. Wow. So the first thing that jumps out to my mind is the Houston Oilers. They crawled all the way up to the second seed. So again, just like last season, if you guys watched last season, they went on some kind of tear and won like seven in a row. And it looks like they're doing the same exact thing today. But it looks like we're going to have more subscriber players in the in the playoffs. So that's good. So on the AFC, we got Salt Lake City Bisons. They retained their one seed. We got the Oilers and the Bulls at the two and the seven. Us, the T-Birds, we crawled all the way up to the three seed. And we got to take on our division opponent, Austin Lumberjacks, as the six seed. And then the Caps, no subscribers, but the Aviators do have tons of subscribers on their team as well. So shout out to all the AFC subscribers that made it into the SFL playoffs here. Over on the NFC side, we got some more now. So San Antonio Voyagers, they will be the number one seed again, just like they were last season. Portland Steamers and the uh, Sacramento Sentinels, they got a subscriber QB on that team. Those are the two and the seven. We got the Virginia Beach Blues and the San Juan Tigers subscribers on both of those teams at the three and the six. And then, of course, the uh, Desperados and the Mounties, no subscribers on those teams. But that is how your SFL playoffs are going to look here in season number two. Now, who will take home the Lombardi? That is the question. Start with the AFC North here. We got the Montreal Monarchs and quarterback Leo Maglizzi finished the season with 3,541 Passing yards, 26 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. So not a terrible, you know, it's over a two to one ratio. Completion percentage is pretty good. Um, so that's, you know, decent season there for Leo. And then he had a subscriber receiver mate that he was chucking the ball to. T Higgins led their squad at over a thousand. But Nick Stoyer, 550 yards on 47 receptions. And he also found the end zone four times as well. Canton Condors up next. They got a subscriber receiver and two subscriber safeties. And that would be Braden Key's one reception for 13 yards. That is that is criminal. That is criminal. He's a very good player. Mid 80s or low 80s star development. I don't know what was going on with uh, with Braden there. They just were they refused to use him. Don't ask me why they refused to use him. And then we got to get a look at, uh, we have two subscriber safeties here. We got Eli Sokowitz and Mike Collins. So Mike Collins here finishes the season with 91 tackles, four TFLs and one pick and uh, no forced fumbles, but seven pass deflections. That's pretty good. And Eli Sokowitz had 60 tackles, three TFLs, no picks, unfortunately, no forced fumbles. And he also had four pass deflections as well over on the AFC South. We got the Oilers. They got a QB two receivers and a safety. And I got to see how many games they won in a row because like they were not even in the playoffs or like they were third place in their division. And now they're the two seed in the AFC. That is crazy. But Mr. Lucas Thomas here, 3,534 passing yards, 26 touchdowns and also 12 interceptions. So his stat line looks pretty similar to that of uh, McGlizzy on the Monarch 71% completion percentage that is very very good so shout out to uh to lucas thomas here and we got our two subscriber receivers who went one and two on this team that's nice floyd butler had 73 receptions for 752 yards to go along with five touchdowns and then Kyrie brooks not far behind on the yardage at 722 that was on 58 receptions so a little bit higher average yards per reception and he also found the end zone eight times which was also best for first place on the Oilers. So shout out to the uh, subscriber receivers here on the Houston Oilers. And then we have one subscriber safety, which would be Miss Ooh, Arturo Esquivel. Wait, what? He was on the Armadillos. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so trades are still a thing. I didn't turn off trades. I turned off injuries, but not trades. So that might, that might mess things up for me. So if I miss you somehow on the stats here, and it's because you got traded somewhere. I have no, I, I don't know. Like I have no, I mean, I guess I could go through every team line by line, but man. So anyways, Arturo Esquivel, we'll start with him. 88 tackles, nine TFLs, two sacks, two picks, three deflections, just a freaking stats sheet stuffer. And then also Thomas Francisco, the strong safety, 75 tackles, three TFLs, a pick, and also six pass deflections as well. So shout out to all the Houston Oilers subscribers, including Mr. Arturo Esquivel. Fuck yeah. I did not even think that uh, trades could definitely be a thing. So that that could have really, really shook some things up in the league. Hopefully everybody pretty much stayed put 
for the most part. But getting a look at Johnny Waters, halfback here of the orbits. He had a 1,000-yard season. Love to see it. And that was playing over Jonathan Taylor. So 1,400 or 1,049 yards, four touchdowns, uh, average yards per carry, 4.1 Nothing too crazy, but 57 broken tackles. That is awesome to see. And then speaking of subscriber running backs in the AFC South, we also have one on the St. Louis Bulls as well. That, not the Blues. No, I'm talking about the Bulls. Austin Kringle, another 1,000-yard rusher. So shout out to two subscribers so far going over the 1,000-yard mark. Austin Kringle had 1,164, 3.7 yards per carry. That's kind of low, but 10 touchdowns. I mean... Not the best thing in the world, but man, he was a workhorse getting the ball over 300 times this season. Moving on over to the AFC East, our division here. Got to kick things off with Mr. Tubby McDouble, another 1,000 yard rusher. You love to see it. 1,090 for Tubby. He, the yards per carry, I mean, I guess four is not terrible. Like, you know, ideally you'd like to 4.5, 4.6, somewhere close to five, but uh, four yards per carry. I mean, it is what it is. 14 touchdowns and 44 broken tackles for Tubby. Only one fumble on the season as well. And looking at our receivers, wow. We got three 1,000-yard receivers, and one of them is a subscriber player, Mike Oxmal. 1,019 yards and on 78 receptions and 11 touchdowns, which is looking like it's probably good for second place on this team. So shout out to Mike. He did a great job. And then St. James, our tight end number two. 19 catches for 160, did find the end zone twice, which is much, much better than his stat line when he was with the San Juan Tigers last season, because man, they they just refused to use him, kind of like uh, Braden Keys on the Condors. And Tubby got involved in the receiving game too, 152 for uh, 6.3 yards per catch, so that is our subscriber receivers. Now we also got couple subscriber defenders as well d tackles to be precise so we got silas Vaden here 38 tackles on the season 12 tfls i do like to see that and also one and a half sack and a pass deflection must have gotten that big d tackle mitt up there to smack down the pigskin that, that sounded very weird i'm gonna move on from that one okay but jay monstro he had 26 tackles eight tfls and two and a half sacks so that's a uh, about the same i would say and then can't forget about our corner, Jax Vaden, 100 tackles. I'm guessing, okay, that's not going to be first place, but it is second. So second place on our team at 100 tackles, three TFLs, and four interceptions. That's got to be first place, which it is. So shout out to Mr. Jax Vaden doing his thing on the defensive end. And then we get a look at Jack Mavros. His uh, average yards per punt was 52.3. Net average didn't get quite close to 50. Did finish with 10 touch or uh, eight inside the 20. He only had, I think, two when we were doing the midseason recap. So all in all, great season by the subscribers for the Thunderbirds. And ultimately, I guess that's what helped us get into the playoffs. Two subscribers on the Austin Lumberjacks who we played today. And that would be Mr. Michael Yakin. Over 4,000 yards through the air. 4,150 to be exact. A phenomenal touchdown interception ratio, 33 to 9. It's crazy. That's really, really good. I mean, I guess it's not crazy, but it's good. Very good. And he also completed 72% of his passes as well. And then his uh, subscriber mate looks like it was kind of like running back by committee, I would say. So he and uh, uh, David Montgomery must have split reps. They did pretty much split reps. But Darian finishes with 685, 3.5 yards per carry. So again, like you want something like this, like... 4.6 for Montgomery. That's pretty good. Um, but Darian did also find Pater four times as well. Dreadnoughts have four subscribers, and I was really, I had some high expectations for them, and they just, for whatever reason, did not finish with a good record. So QB Jaden Hayes, he went close to 4,000, though. 3,876. Not bad. Uh, 25 touchdowns to 14 picks. That's not the best touchdown interception ratio. I mean, it's really, you know, it's not great. It's not great. It's less than two to one and 68 percent completion get a look at his receivers i mean we got some uh some ballers out here so i don't know where the problem was but alexander Kleblek finishes with 1185 also found the end zone eight times so did yeezy fuentes that's really good to see and they both finished with over a thousand yards yeezy at 1089 and then brother of Jaden hayes the qb is caleb hayes and he had 572 yards on 42 receptions 
and also two touchdowns. So our, our uh, subscribers, they led the team in touchdowns. And then also as far as yards, they were close. Uh, receptions, I believe it was Fuentes, was Fuentes, but Kleblek was a close second. And then we look at the last team here in the AFC East. That would be the Brooklyn Nighthawks, if I can find them. They got one subscriber. It's QB Derek Daragosa. And he finishes with 3,000 and triple sevens. Lucky sevens there. But I guess it wasn't too lucky for the Nighthawks because they did miss the playoffs. Not the best. Again, close to a 2-1. Touchdown interception ratio, 27-15. Decent completion percentage. So all in all, it's a pretty decent season here for Derek. And finishing up the AFC over in the AFC West, we got the Aviators who are in the playoffs now. And they got... A subscriber QB, two subscriber running backs, two subscriber defenders, and a subscriber wide receiver. So hopefully all these subs helped them get into the playoff push. But Cameron Moore here, QB, finishes with 4,349 yards, 35 to 11, better on the touchdown interception ratio, and also completing his passes at a very high clip at 70%. So you love to see that. And then you got our two subscriber uh, halfbacks here, Aiden Leslie, another 1,000 yard rusher. So that is awesome. Seeing a lot of subscribers go over 1,000 yards on the ground. You love to see that. But Aiden finishes with 1,158 and 11 touchdowns. Four fumbles though. Wow. Is that going to make an impact in the playoffs? I don't know. We will have to find out. Cameron Moore also getting his thing done on the ground as well. 319. And he found pay dirt twice as a rusher. So there you go. And then can I forget about Nico Petey here? 300 yards on the nose, 11 touchdowns though. So tied with Leslie for touchdowns. So they combined for 22 touchdowns, 24 really if you throw in uh, Cameron Moore's. So the rushing attack was on full display here. And then we cannot forget about our newest subscriber, Daniel THG, finishing uh, third place on the team. Almost 1,000 yards through the air receiving. That's pretty good. And he didn't even join. He joined like week four-ish, week three. I'm not 100% sure, but he had 67 receptions, 992, and he found pay dirt six times as well. So these subscribers kind of uh, showing up and showing out here. You love to see that. And uh, we got two subscriber defenders as well, unless they got traded. No, so Dior Love is the subscriber corner. He had 70 tackles, one TFL, no picks though. See, the defenders just kind of struggled for the most part in terms of subscribers. Did have a forced fumble though. That's good. And also six pass deflections. And then uh, not Oreo, though. He didn't really struggle too much. He had 60 tackles, 13 TFLs, and also 6.8 sacks and a pass deflection as well. So or, uh, Aviators, I almost uh, said the Oreos. <laughs> Maybe I'll make that a team in uh, Madden 25 SFL. And can you guys imagine seeing all these teams next season for the next iteration of the SFL? All teams created by me. I don't know about you guys, but I am super hyped for that. So please make sure you check out the next episode that will be dropping a few days after the Madden 25 early release. Oakland Wizards next up here, Dak Prescott. I see he had an okay season, but subscriber running back I am Al Musa continuing the streak of 1,000 yard sub receivers that we're seeing. He had 1,185. Also found pay dirt 13 times under the 4.0 yard yard per carry mark. So not the best, but you know, seems like that's been kind of the common theme with these subscribers. I don't know why. Maybe they're just getting too many handoffs. I'm not 100% sure. But we got two subscriber defenders here. We got uh, Michael Briner and C. Ben as they are back-to-back -back here on the stat sheet. Both with 56 tackles and Briner had 10 TFLs and four and a half sacks. That's really good. C. Ben had three TFLs, a half a sack, and also a pick. That's good to see. Briner had a forced fumble. That's nice. And then C. Ben had three pass deflections. But the TFLs, that probably led the team. It was tied. With Tier Tart and uh, Ode Ingbo. Never can pronounce his name right. Ah! But shout out Michael Briner for tying, you know, first place on his team for TFLs and second place also in sacks. We're going to go to these Salt Lake City Bisons. And I'm expecting Mason Buchanan. He must have just had some kind of season. Be oh, and yeah, we'll also check, you know, MVP voting and stuff like that too. Almost forgot. But Mason Buchanan, yeah, I would say 4,226 yards and... Pretty good uh, over 2-1 to one on the touchdown interception ratio, 33-13, to 13, and 71% of his passes are completed. And remember, his team is the one—are they the one seed? They are the one seed, yes. In the AFC playoffs, 
So will we be seeing Mason Buchanan and the Bisons for a second season in a row? And the Albuquerque Armadillos, no more Arturo Esquivel. So he's on, what was he on the, uh, was it the Oilers? Not sure. I can't remember. I just went over it. But anyways, he's no longer on this team, but we do have subscriber receiver Jaden Taylor going over the thousand yard mark playing alongside AJ Brown some nice production there he finishes with 1049 and also four touchdowns on 83 receptions and then also tight end Bjorn Jeffrey had 53 receptions 512 yards and also he found the end zone six times as well so shout out to our two receivers on the armadillos two subscribers here in the nfc north only two as a matter of fact and they are both on the anchorage snowhawks so justin shepherd another 1000 yard rusher i guess you know 1000 i guess like 1500 is the new 1000 this in this day and age right like 1000 always used to be such a big deal but you always see halfbacks get over that amount but still it's a good accomplishment. It's a good milestone. And Mr. Shepard here had 1,057 yards on the ground and also eight tackles or eight tackles. He might have had eight tackles. I don't know how many tackles he had. Maybe I'll go check. He had eight touchdowns and almost hit that four yards per carry average, but just fell short. And then we also have our subscriber uh, corner here, Mason Smith, 75 tackles on the season, three TFLs, no picks, no forced fumbles, and also a pass deflection. Did Shepard have any tackles? Now I'm curious. No, doesn't look like he did. Aww. Tucker on the Virginia Beach Blues got his boys into the postseason, and he did that by throwing 3,650 yards through the air, 32 touchdowns to nine interceptions. That's a good touchdown interception ratio over three to one and a 75% completion percentage. Wow. Who was he slinging the rock to? Now I'm curious. Who's his uh, Jordan Addison, Mark Andrews? Okay. John Dotson, uh, Trey Tucker. So Tucker to Tucker, Tucker to Tucker. That was a combination. And we'll go ahead and go over to the San Juan Tigers because they're in the same division. And they also have one uh, subscriber player on that team as well, which is King Love, the corner. And he finishes the season with 79 tackles, one TFL, one interception, uh, five pass deflections though. That's pretty good. And the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods here, Mr. Lionel Moore, the QB, 3,477 yards, 34 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. So that's also, we're seeing some pretty good touchdown interception ratios, I will, I will say. So I am, you know, pleasantly, uh, not surprised, but impressed with our subscriber QBs. And then we cannot forget about our free safety, Flash Parker. He finished with 81 tackles, one TFL, one pick, and also a pass deflection as well on the season. San Antonio Voyagers here in the NFC East, they must be the team to beat, and I'm sure it has to do with this man right here, Lamar Jackson being on the team. But we have uh, two, two subscriber running backs, three running backs, actually four, really, if you count Lamar Jackson. He's a running back, right? I'm talking about total running backs. You might as well count him as a running back. But Matt Hayward here, he finishes almost 1,000 yards but again, when you got Lamar Jackson, he's going to take a lot of those yards away. Uh, Mac did have 13 touchdowns on 3.6 yards per carry. And then we also had Austin Gutierrez here with 202. He had four yards per carry and he had two touchdowns as well. The Dubs, Dublin Shamrocks, unfortunately missing the playoffs. But Jesse Buzo Jr. had a pretty stellar year. 4,110 yards through the air. He's also over a 3-1 on the touchdown interception ratio, 33 to 10. 72% completion. You love to see that. That is very good. And we have uh, our subscriber receiver here, Uku Tree Rat. He had 720 yards receiving, four touchdowns. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, it's you know, it's not crazy, but it's production. You'll take it certainly. And then also we have a subscriber defender here, Ty Royal Smoochie Wallace. Great name, by the way. Love it. I hope we have Ty Royal Smoochie Wallace as a name in the next SFL. That would be awesome. But 76 tackles, two tackles for loss, a pick, uh, three pass deflections. So pretty stellar season here by Mr. Ty Royal. And finishing up things here in the NFC West, we got the Sacramento Sentinels and we got Rocky DiBernardo, 4,573 yards. He was a gunslinger, 36 to 11, great inter touchdown interception ratio. The completion percentage is there at 72. You love to see that. And he got his boys also into the playoffs as well. And I'm sure it was on, you know, the shoulders of just that great, great performance that he had. And then the last team here, we got the Honolulu Dragons. Couple of uh, receivers on these on this team here. So we got James, or one receiver and defender, I should say. 
So James Briner finished with 69 re receptions. That is extremely nice, by the way. 622 yards total receiving and only found pay dirt once. Kind of wish I would have seen. You would have loved to see him up higher. Uh, but Zachary Nolan, second place on the team in total tackles at 103. 10 TFLs, two sacks. The 10 TFLs is no, not going to be first. Probably second, probably third, I would say. Um, and also seven pass deflections as well. So congrats to all the subscribers. If I miss anyone, please let me know. I'm doing most of this from memory and also cross-referencing my Discord, which you should join. But before we get into the playoffs, let's just take a look and see if any of our subscribers won any yearly award. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. No shocker there. And look who the runner-up is. No shocker there. How about Jordan Love on our team, though? That's pretty awesome. And Rocky DiBernardo of the Sentinels finishes in fourth place. On the voting, Michael Yakin of the Lumberjacks, seventh place. Cameron Moore of the Aviators, eighth place. And Lionel Moore of the Redwoods, tenth place. So we got some subscribers up there. That's great to see. And uh, did our coach, um, no, no coach of the year nods for us. Okay, so there you go. Offensive player of the year in the AFC. We got I am Al Musa of the Wizards, fourth place. Jordan Love, also third. Michael Yakin of the Lumberjacks, the L Jacks, as I call them. Sixth place, Cameron Moore, seventh, Austin Kringle, eighth. Okay, so seeing some subscribers up here, I do like to see that. Might not see any on the defensive side. Yeah, no, no, no voting for that. Don't have to worry about rookies or defensive play. I don't think I had, well, I wouldn't matter. Anyways, there's not any rookies technically. Uh, Michael Yakin, or best QB, Jordan Love, Michael Yakin, runner up on the LJAX, Cameron Moore. Third place on the Aviators, Mason Buchanan. Fourth place on the Bisons, Lucas Thomas. Sixth place on the Wizards. Lots of people up here. Jaden Hayes of the Dreadnoughts, ninth place. And Leo McGlizzy of the Monarchs, tenth place. Best running back, we should see tons of them. Nick Chubb wins it, but I am Musa of the Wizards, second place. Austin Kringle of the Bulls is in fourth place. That's great to see. Tubby McDouble on our team, seventh place. Kyron Williams, that's a fun story. He used to be on the Thunderbirds, and now he's on the Bisons doing great. I guess we should never let him go. Yes, we should, because Tubby is the guy. And then Aiden Leslie, ninth place on the Aviators. Awesome to see. Best wide receiver. Anybody on here? Mike Oxmall of the Thunderbirds, sixth place in voting. And Alexander Klobleck, eighth place for the Dreadnoughts. Great to see. No offensive linemen, unfortunately, in the SFL. Maybe in the... Madden 25 iteration, right? Maybe we'll get some some offensive line subscribers. That would be great. Best D lineman, nobody on that side. Best linebacker, we don't even have too many. Uh, nobody there, at least not on the AFC. Best DB, I'm thinking, oh, Jax Vaden. Okay, let me not say it. Fourth place in voting for Jax Vaden. Best DB in the AFC. You love to see that. And of course, he's on our team as well. And unfortunately for my man, Jack Mavros, they do not list any seasonal awards for punters, which I think that they should. Best QB in the NFC, of course, it'll go to Lamar Jackson, but Lionel Moore of the Redwoods, third place. Rocky DiBernardo, sixth place on the Sentinels. Jesse Buzo, eighth place on the Shamrocks. C. Tucker of the Blues, also in there as well. So lots of uh, familiar subscriber faces. You love to see that. I think most people were on the AFC. Mac Hayward. He gets 10th place on the Voyagers, but a lot of AFC, I feel like, uh, subscribers and not as many NFC ones. Any receivers in here? No. O-lineman, we know. D-lineman, probably not going to see any. No, we do not. Linebacker, any linebackers here in the NFC? No. Best DB? Can I get a best DB? Best DB for 50. Best DB for 100. No. No DBs. So really nothing too crazy going on on the NFC side. We will sim the wild card week. Will the Thunderbirds still be in the playoff push? And which of our subscribers will be in? And which of our subscribers will be out? Well, we are still in and we take on the Houston Oilers. So that should be a fun, fun one indeed. And get a look at, see what happened in the wild card round here. So the Sentinels beat the Steamers 21-14 on the NFC. The San Juan Tigers beat the Blues 35-14, and the Louisville Desperados beat the London Mounties 21-17. And over on our side, we absolutely crushed and destroyed the L Jacks 45-7. Oilers beat the Bulls 21-14, and unfortunately, the Aviators do lose to the Caps 
1 to 14. So that is how things will shake up here in the wild card round. And we're still in it. Should be primed and ready for a fun one. We'll go ahead and advance week to the conference championship and see if we do beat the Oilers, which we do not. So Oilers not hold on. I gotta I gotta freaking no. I gotta see something. These Oilers, man, I have to see uh how many games in a in a row that they won. Cause I'm guessing it's probably something pretty crazy. I gotta see it now. Cause now they're going for a Super Bowl. So they started out a little sluggish, right? And then from week seven on, they got a win, win, two, that's three, four, five, six. They won six in a row, lost to the Bulls, and then went on to win four in a row after that. So that's like, what? what's that, like 10 out of 11 games? Oh my God. They did this last season too. These Oilers, man, are sneaky good, and we beat them last season to move on and advance in the playoffs, but they got their revenge in us this week, and they will continue to push on towards that Lombardi. I'm sorry, Smalls Trophy is what I meant to say. And wow, we got some stuff. We got some stuff going on here. So we'll start with the AFC, uh, the Bisons. Number one seed lost to the four seed Caps. And of course, the Oilers dispelled us. So we got the two seed Houston Oilers and the four seed Caps taking on the six seed Tigers and the seven seed Sentinels. What am I looking at right here? The Sentinels dispatched the number one seed in the NFC the Houston Voyagers. So we will, we could potentially not have some, no, we're going to have at least one subscriber in the Super Bowl, regardless of what happens. But we got the two seed Oilers, the four seed Caps, the six seed Tigers, and the seven seed Sentinels. Those are going to be your teams fighting for that, those two final spots to play for the Smalls Trophy. And you see it up there on your screen, man. The Sentinels and the Oilers are going to be Playing for the Smalls Trophy, we had 28-27 uh, was your score there on the NFC side, and then 17-13 was your score on the AFC side, and we got, uh, I, I gotta say, man, I'm torn between this one. We got a subscriber on uh, on both squads, both squads here, so I, I say may the best man win. Let's see, uh, check out the box score for those games last week. We had the Tigers, uh, or yeah, the Sentinels barely edging out. The San Juan Tigers and Rocky DiBernardo, he came in and did his thing. 309 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, basically, more or less a perfect game. And then the Caps and the Oilers looks like it was more of a defensive-minded game. And Lucas Thomas, the QB, he, yeah, I mean, I guess it was. Both QBs really didn't do a whole heck of a lot. But Lucas ultimately uh, gets to claim victory here as he had 163, two touchdowns and a pick. And we'll get a look at his uh, star receivers here, Floyd Butler and Kyrie Brooks. Each one had four receptions, Floyd with 65 yards, Kyrie Brooks with 55 yards, and Floyd also with one touchdown as well. And then we cannot forget about our defenders, who we have a new one here, Arturo Esquivel. Hey, it's a good thing you got traded from the Albuquerque Armadillos, my man, because now you're playing for a championship. He had six tackles. He had a sack in there as well. And we also have uh, our safety here, Thomas Francisco. He had four tackles and two pass deflections. So shout out to the Sacramento Sentinels and the Houston Oilers. Who is going to win this game? It all comes down to this. We're going to go ahead and advance week. And I wouldn't be shocked either way. Whoever comes away with this one, congrats to you. And it is the Sacramento Sentinels. 26 to 20. We got to take a look and see who won the Super Bowl MVP. It is Akella Witherspoon. So he probably had like, you know, a pick six or something. That's usually how defenders win that award. But we'll take a look at the box score here. That was a close game. 26 to 20. And can I still, can I still see it? Super Bowl? Where's Super Bowl? Super Bowl. Yeah, there we go. 26, 20. Uh, let's see. D Bernardo. 237, two and one. So not as, you know, not his best performance, but apparently it was just enough. Lucas Thomas went for 191, one and one. And then our receivers here on the Oilers, we had Kyrie Brooks, two for 34 and Floyd Butler, four for 33 and also a touchdown as well. Was there any big defensive plays though? That's the question. Arturo Esquivel had eight tackles, no sacks or anything like that. And uh, Francisco had six tackles and one TFL. So man, 
Okay, that was that was pretty crazy. That was pretty crazy. Sacramento Sentinels do get to hoist the Smalls Trophy, and that will officially conclude the Madden 24 iteration of the SFL. But like I said, guys, here in a couple days, whenever this comes out, I would say two, three days after you're watching this, it will be Madden 25 SFL time. And like I said, all 32 teams will be custom relocated using Team Builder. I got about 10 of the logos done right now. And I am in the freaking lab like Dexter putting in the work. And it should be a fun, fun series. So get ready for that. Please subscribe. Make sure if you want to join that SFL, I want to try to get the same type of uh, you know engagement and stuff that we had going on this one and even more. Maybe we could get 100 subscribers in that league. That would be awesome. I have to wait and see. But uh, there you have it for Madden 24 SFL. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.